Here are 10 Super Nintendo games you can buy when you're kind of broke. Maybe you're at a convention, or maybe you're at a video game store, and you see all the great games that you want to grab, but they're a little bit too expensive for you. You don't want to leave empty-handed. Well, you can find some pretty fun games at a cost-efficient rate. All the games on this list are going to be between 5 and 15 bucks. Now, you're not going to find, like, a hidden Chrono Trigger or something like that on this list, but the games on this list are at least kind of playable, in my opinion. First game on the list is a game called Zoop. Now, Zoop, when it was released, was available on, like, all platforms at the time. I still had a lot of fun with this game. It's a puzzle game. You play this little arrow that shoots, you know, up, down, left, right, wherever you want to go. These little pieces on the side keep coming more and more towards you, and you can't let them hit you. Whatever color you are, you could absorb that color to eliminate it. If there's another color behind it, then you change into that color that's behind it, and you can go on from there. Simple concept, it gets pretty hectic after a while. I still come back to this game every once in a while, and honestly, this is one of the cheapest, cheapest, cheapest Super Nintendo games you can grab. With the exception of a lot of sports games and the game show games, this is one of the cheapest Super Nintendo games out there, and it's a game I still like playing today. In the early 90s, there was a sudden resurgence of Scooby-Doo, which happens every so often. Now, I think the cartoon came back in fashion being like an after-school something or other, maybe like on Boomerang or whatever it was at the time, Cartoon Network. And we had the live-action movie, so why not capitalize on some old-school Scooby-Doo? Admittedly, I like the Genesis version better, however, the Super Nintendo version plays just fine. It just plays like a fun, cartoony, Super Nintendo-style, you know, uh, like, seek the thing kind of game. And you don't die. That meter above you, that's like your scare meter. And when you're too scared, that's when you lose a life. I know, I just said you don't die, and like, <laughs> here you are with lives. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. Yeah, we even have a Super FX game on this list in the game of Vortex. Now, when I first rented Vortex, I was blown away. I was like, oh my god, it's like, like Robotech in a way, because you have like your robot that can change into things. A little bit like Star Fox. Well, when you first start playing the game anyway, the first level is very Star Fox-ish, where you're going around, you're shooting the things. You know, it's the Super FX chip, so you can only do so much with your polygons. And this by itself would have been an okay game. It would have been fine. But then the fact later on, because you can transform into like a robotic creature, of like a robot, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's not a creature, it's a robot. Uh, there's also some, some ground levels in this game too. So they actually, you're actually, you know, ground level, walking around, jumping around, shooting these things too. A lot of gameplay value with Vortex. Might be worth checking out. I'm a big fan of Hyperzone. Now, Hyperzone, when you first look at it, it pretty much looks like F-Zero, and I totally get that. In fact, even how you recharge your health is very F-Zero-like. But it's like a behind-the-back shooter where you have these things in your way and you're just shooting them out of the way. I had a lot of fun with Hyperzone, and Hyperzone's one of those games you can always find it for super cheap. It just looks cool. Let's hear it. Ah, oh, classic. The Tiny Toon games are generally pretty good, and this Tiny Toon's Buster Busts Loose, it's a fine platformer. It's a cartoony platformer. It really emphasizes that dash button. It wants you to dash, like, all the time. But other than that, it's a decent platformer. I mean, it looks great, looks cool. Konami, gotta love that. If you're just looking for another game to add to the collection, something on the, you know, the, a game that looks like this just to have around, Buster Busts Loose, man. Tiny Toon Adventures, can't go wrong. When you first see Wild Snake, you're like, all right, I already get it. It's Tetris with snakes, right? You're just looking at it, you're like, okay, it's Tetris with snakes. Not exactly. This game plays like Tetris with snakes. No, I'm just kidding. This game, <laughs> you, you, you pile up these snakes, you can manipulate them and move them around and slither them around uh, as they're falling, and even after they've fallen, too. But then it's when you get the other snakes that touch the other ones, it eliminates that one and then leaves the one that you just left there. Does that make sense to you? Maybe a little bit, hopefully. This game really emphasizes, like the Puyo games, it really emphasizes on the combos. Like you almost want to fail for a little bit to stack some up and then start going for those combos at the end. But Wild Snake, you might see it at conventions and you're like, you know, the label means nothing. But the game itself, eh, might be worth checking out. You have an okay, decent shooter in D-Force. Now, D-Force, although it's the name of a game that they would never get away with today, it's a helicopter shooter. It's just your, your standard issue vertical shooter. You know, think like a 1942 where you're, you're flying around, you're shooting the things, you can get your upgrades and shoot more bolts and stuff like that. It's fine. It's, it's decent. I got nothing wrong to say about this. And it's cheap. Gotta love that. D-Force, that's right. 
Now, when I first heard about Porky Pig's Haunted Holiday back in the day, I couldn't be any less interested. Why Porky Pig out of all of the Looney Tune characters? Well, maybe it's because Porky Pig never had his own game. I don't know. Bugs Bunny already had one. I mean, this was during a time when Marvin the Martian was like, S tier was on all the t-shirts and everything era. But Porky Pig, really? Well, here, I'm telling I'm here, I'm here to tell you. Hold on now. I'm here to tell you. This game has some of the best animation I've ever seen on any Super Nintendo game of any price range. The animation in this game is stellar. Most people will tell you that's where this game ends. Other than that, it's just a generic platformer. It really is. But worth it for the animation. It just looks cool. It looks neat. Porky Pig's Haunted Holiday. If you happen to see it, you happen to find it for cheap, might be worth grabbing. Now, a couple years after Super Nintendo's release, everything was Street Fighter 2 clones. I swear there's a new Street Fighter 2 clone every month. In this Tough Enough, and on the cover of the box it says, Hey Punk, are you tough enough? Which is kind of ridiculous anyway. I was curious to check it out. And you know what? It's not terrible, terrible. From Jalico, I mean, I was a big fan of Rival Turf and those games. So it's like a Rival Turf fighting, like one-on-one -on -one fighting. Don't really need to say too much more beyond that. When you play the story mode, you can choose from four characters, versus you can do all the characters and all that. It's okay, but you know, for its price, eh, you know, it's just another thing to have. I'm not, I'm not really selling it, am I? <laughs> well, it's, it's fine, how about that? Now, although I played it mostly on the PlayStation 1, Revolution X is fine. It's a, it's a great game. I think. Now you got your on-rail shooters, you got your Operation Wolf, you have games like Terminator 2 was very popular during this time. And then we have this game, Revolution X, which is another on-rail shooter where you're shooting the other enemies as soon as they pop up, or best you can anyway. Interesting that you have not only your bolts, but you also have CDs. Now your CDs are your special attack, your, your more powerful weapon, which I thought was kind of interesting. Different from some other shooters too, instead of like just always moving right, always moving left, sometimes you can choose. Yeah, you got a choice if you want to go a certain way or go inside the club or, you know, or do whatever. And then when you go in there, it's more of the same. It's <laughs> shooting the other guys before, before they get you. Revolution X on rail shooter and Features Aerosmith, you're gonna hear some songs from Aerosmith. Can't can't go wrong there, right? I wanna say Smart Ball was like the second or third game I ever rented for the Super Nintendo. And I looked at the back of the box, I was like, ah, oh, it looks cartoony, looks fun, I'm all I'm down. And you play it, and it's super simplistic. It's like, you know, totally a kid's game. But there's still a lot of fun to be had with a game like this. Now you play as this little blob. It's basically just, you know, like a ball of jelly moving around and everything. And I'm sure already someone is in the comments saying, oh, the game was called Jelly Boy in, in Japan. I'm sure it was. But it's fine. And it's just, you just go around and you pop the enemies, or you can pick up balls and throw them at them and stuff like that. It's, it's cute, and it's cheap. Wolf Child was a pretty decent action game. I remember playing this one, uh, I remember really, really liking getting into this one. Uh, for the Super Nintendo, it's been on all other platforms too, it was on Sega CD. I remember specifically the Super Nintendo version, I, I really got into and loved the music and everything like that, loved the graphics, loved how everything looked. It's a game that looks like this, and there are a few games that have this look, this art, this color, this everything. And they're probably all from the same team, probably. It was a little bit like that Turrican style, you know, and maybe, maybe they're all from the same team. But Wolf Child, I had a lot of fun with, and it's a game that you can find for I don't know, 10, 15 bucks, whatever it's going for nowadays. It's called Wolf Child. And if you're looking for Nintendo games to buy when you're kind of broke, well, check out that video in the meantime. I thank you for watching. Thank you for your subscription. More videos are always coming out soon, so I hope you're subscribed.